Hello, everybody. Okay, so I know that the next episode of Hawkeye is coming out in just a few days, um, so it might be better for me to wait until it comes out before I start talking about the show, but um, I've already waited way too long uh, to start talking about it, so, um, you know, I'm just going to get this out there now before the next episode comes out, um, especially because of what might happen in the next episode. Okay, so Hawkeye, what's been going on in the show so far? Um, so basically, um, the show starts out with um, it, with a flashback to, to to the events of the first Avengers movie, and we're we're shown the perspective of um, oh, excuse me, we're shown the perspective of a, a young Kate Bishop who is in New York at the time uh, of the attack on New York during the fir uh, first Avengers movie. Um, she's saved by Hawkeye, though not you know. <clears throat> intentionally just by a matter of circumstance you know she just happened to be there you know when when clint destroyed one of the ships of the uh, the chitari that was invading new york and uh you know she sees hawkeye there and she is becomes inspired to you know be like hawkeye you know and um so prior to this um her mother and father were actually uh, in an argument and um we don't see it happen but uh, but apparently he, he he dies during the uh, attack on New York, and uh, this is also one of the reasons why uh, Kate wants to become a superhero. You know, you know specifically, you know, like Hawkeye. Um, so after that, um, we 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 jump to um, present day, and um, <clears throat> basically, um, Kate is uh, practicing her archery skills um, by uh, trying to shoot the bell of a bell tower to get it to ring, and um, she accidentally causes it to collapse. Um, so that um, causes it to, um, uh, so her, her, her mother um, then, um, you know, basically cancels her credit card, which doesn't really, you know, play that much into the plot. It just means that um, she, she can't use her card to, to, to buy stuff, um, you know, later on, which I'll, I'll get into um, later. Um, the most important thing that, that, that's going on here is that um, in, in present day, um, uh, Ele uh, Eleanor, which is Kate's mother, um, she she has a new boyfriend now. Um, uh, Jack, uh, do <laughs> forgive me if I if I'm pronouncing this wrong, but uh, excuse me. Uh, his name is Jack. Uh, do <laughs> do <Duque> <laughs> uh, His name is Jack. Uh, I'm not gonna bother trying to pronounce his last name because I, I'm honestly not sure. I, I'm pretty sure they've said it in the show. It, you know, I've just forgotten, but, uh, yeah, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> his name is Jack, although in the comics his name is J Jacques. <laughs> um, so, 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 yeah, um, basically, um, they, they, they go to this Christmas party, and, um, and, uh, Kate, uh, manages to find this black market auction, um, that, that Jack is attending, uh, as well as uh, her uncle, uh, Armand, and, um, <clears throat> Basically, two of the items sold at this black market <laughs> black market auction is um, the the Ronin suit which Hawkeye wore uh, during Avengers Endgame, and of course the Ronin sword which uh, Jack actually uh, attempts to buy. Um, now, both of these items were recovered from the Avengers compound, um, and um, when when the tracksuit mafia attacks the auction to um, retrieve these items. Um, in order to escape without uh, her identity being known, um, Bishop wears the Ronin suit, um, you know, to do just that. And uh, the tracksuit mafia is also apparently after a watch that was also recovered from uh, the Avengers compound. Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure what this watch is, is one of the time traveling devices that they used in Avengers Endgame. But, uh, but as of right now, um, it hasn't been confirmed in the show um, thus far as to what exactly the watch is, although I'm pretty sure it is um, one of those time-traveling devices that they used in Avengers Endgame. So um, what exactly um, they're going to use that for, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it's something big, especially now that Kang the Conqueror has been introduced, and also a couple of other things which I'll get into later. Um, <clears throat> So, um, I mentioned uh, Jack earlier before. Um, who is Jack? Um, well, basically, um, Jack is actually a character from the comics named Swordsman. 
And yes, I, I, I did say that, that that was his actual name. His name is Swordsman. <laughs> listen, listen. Nobody ever said that um <laughs> that uh, Marvel was good at naming their characters, all right? <laughs> Seriously, though, what, what, what kind of a name is, is Swordsman anyway? <laughs> you know, <laughs> of all the things you, you, you could have named a character who, who specializes in using swords, really, Swordsman, <laughs> that's what you call him? Even something as generic as Sword Master would have sounded better, you know what I mean? <laughs> but but anyway, um, Swordsman is uh, actually Hawkeye's mentor from the comics, uh, and is actually also the person who gave Hawkeye the Hawkeye name. Although um, the actor who plays uh, Swordsman in in the um, TV show has said that um, he doesn't expect it to be uh, to play that role of Hawkeye's mentor on the show, and uh, so far it doesn't look like that's what they're going to do with his character. Although you know. There's still two episodes left, so we'll see what happens. But uh, so far, it looks like he's not going to turn out to be Hawkeye's mentor. So, um, <clears throat> to go back to uh, what I was talking about, um, Kate escapes from the Black Hawk at March attack um, wearing the Ronin suit. She rescues a dog that's blind in one eye. That's um, Lucky the Pizza Dog, who is also from the comics. Um, uh, she drops off uh, the dog uh, on her apartment, um, and uh, I forget what it is that, that she's trying to do. Like, I think she tries to get rid of the suit or, or something like that. In any case, she gets attacked by the tracksuit mafia after dropping off the dog, and Hawkeye has to um, save her uh, because they hear about um, the Black Arcade. He He is in New York with his family, and, and uh, you know... We're introduced to them uh, by him w watching a play that's on Broadway um, of, of, of Steve Rogers, which is about, the, you know, the events of the first Avengers movie. And um, uh, so, you know, Hawkeye's in New York at the, at the time, and uh, he hears on the news about the, uh, the black market auction attack and, and specifically sees that, the, that somebody's wearing the Ronin suit. And so that's what causes him to, to go... Uh, and look for whoever it is is wearing the suit and he he finds uh, Kate and uh, unmasks her and and sees you know that um basically he has to uh, clear her name in order to uh, protect her because of um, the reputation that the Ronin suit has due to what he did during his time as Ronin <laughs> the tracksuit mafia is one of the many gangs that um he attacked and destroyed um you know, well, I suppose not necessarily destroy it, just killed a whole bunch of people in, um, during his time as Ronin. And so, um, and that's going to be important later on, um, because, um, in the second episode, um, you know, <laughs> the tracksuit mafia, uh, comes after, uh, Kate, uh, because, um, they actually did follow her back to her apartment and her name is on the buzzer. So they were able to, uh, identify her as Ronan and they attack her apartment. Um, they basically um, burn the place with Molotov cocktails, forcing them to leave, and they leave the suit behind. When when uh, Hawkeye tries to uh, get the suit back by returning to the apartment in disguise as a firefighter, he sees that the suit's already gone. He, see, he finds out that apparently um, one of the fighter fighters is uh, a member of um, a, a <laughs> that the, the New York City uh, LARPers or, or, or something like that, and uh, basically li live action role play, and uh, so he he attends one of their events uh, to to confront the, the the person who who took the suit, you know, asking for them back, and of course he has to play along with the role play and everything. <laughs> it's it's quite ridiculous, um, but uh, he manages to get the suit back and. Excuse me, and um, basically allows himself to be captured by the tracksuit mafia, um, so he can be interrogated by them and try to uh, clear Kate's name of the suit. But um, when she finds out that Hawkeye's been captured, she tries to save the day, which actually completely ruins her plan. And then we, at the end of the episode, we see um, the gang's boss, 
um, who is actually Maya Lopez, Echo. Now, um, <laughs> who is Echo? What, 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 where does she come from? What does she do? What's her specialty, etc.? Now, the interesting thing about this is that um, before this, before the show debuted, um, th they actually announced on Disney Plus Day that they were going to be doing an Echo uh, Disney Plus series. So it's definitely not a coincidence that they announced this series uh, just before Echo makes her debut um, on the Hawkeye show. <laughs> So, um, Echo is, uh, actually, um, uh, a character whose powers are, she, she can mimic, uh, other characters' abilities just by watching them, watching them do them once. Um, so in other words, she's very much like Taskmaster. Um, uh, but although she wasn't created, um, specifically to be, like, a, a copy of Taskmaster or anything like that, because, um, actually, um, she is. She made her debut more or less as a, a Daredevil character, um, and actually, she was in the comics to be the first person to wear the Ronin suit. So um, that's her connection to the Ronin suit, which is why um, she's in the show. Which is, uh, yeah. I, so I basically didn't know anything about this character until uh, I saw her on the show. I didn't even know who she was when I saw her on the show. So I immediately. Uh, started to look up information on her and what I learned I immediately became intrigued with her because she's had quite quite an interesting history um, in the comics um, so like I said um, she's mainly a, a daredevil character um, Kingpin killed her father lied to her told her it was daredevil who did it um, and and so um, was basically manipulated into being an enemy of daredevil now um, the reason why um, uh, Echo is not necessarily a copy of Taskmaster is because um, <laughs> the reason... Uh, so, so basically, she's meant to act as a foil to Daredevil in that um, just as how uh, Daredevil can't see, um, uh, Echo uh, is deaf. <clears throat> so, um, you know, <laughs> now you might be wondering... You know, spoilers for Black Widow, by the way. Um, you might be wondering, um, if Echo has the same powers as Taskmaster, why didn't they just make Echo Taskmaster's true identity and Black Widow uh, if they wanted to gender swap Taskmaster? Uh, the reason for that is because the fact that Echo is deaf um, is such a dramatic difference uh, in her character uh, between Taskmaster and her that um, you, you can't really... Uh, say that they're one for one the same uh, again especially since you know echo is meant to be a foil to daredevil and, and not necessarily a taskmaster copy so uh, while i do think it would have been interesting to to introduce echo as taskmaster in the mcu um again that they're not exactly the same so i don't think it would have uh, worked out as well um but yeah um um what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, also, uh, the fact that, um, that the fact that, um, that, um, Kingpin is the one who, um, told a light to Echo about who killed her father, um, is also a reason for me to believe that, um, Kingpin is actually going to make his MCU debut, um, in the show, uh, specifically in the next episode, um, now I know some people are gonna say, but 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 Kingpin already made his MCU debut in the Daredevil show, which, you know, unfortunately, it's been confirmed that the that the Netflix shows, you know, and all the other stuff that was produced uh, before um, they made the Disney the Disney Plus shows, like anything pre Disney Plus is not canon to the MCU, you know, or at least it. it it's in a separate universe from, from the MCU proper. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, this is going to come up again um, later on um, because um, of the something else. that, that um, but, So yeah, basically, um, I don't know if they're going to retcon the Daredevil show to be canon to the MCU or if they're going to leave it separate. And then um, this version of Kingpin that I'm sure is going to be introduced... Um, is going to be played by the same actor, which I hope is the case. 
oh, excuse me, sorry about that. Or if they're, you know, like I'm pretty sure it is going to be the same actor, but, but a different, same actor, same character, but in the MCU proper and not, you know, just, God, I'm so, I'm so terrible at explaining this. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they're going to keep the show separate, even if it's the same actor and same character. But, uh, regardless of such, um, so at this point, I think a lot of people uh, would say that, um, you know, the Hawkeye show is just, you know, a show that exists, like nothing special. Uh, but I think that with the ending of the second episode, um, the show picks up tremendously, um, not only because of the way that Echo is introduced, uh, but because of everything that happens uh, afterwards. You know, like, I still wouldn't say that the show is, you know, anything spectacular or amazing or anything like that. But at this point, I would say it is uh, better than, you know, just a show that exists, you know? So, uh... Of course, you know, episode three starts, it starts off with, um, basically, uh, Echo's origin story, you know, um, uh, she grew up, um, she, she was born deaf, um, so, um, she had to, uh, grow up, uh, you know, learning how, how to, uh, deal with that, and, you know, of course, learning how to communicate using sign language and whatnot, uh, and of course, you know, uh, like in the comics, um, her father was killed, although, um, uh, unlike in the comics, um, uh, his fa her father was killed by, by Ronan rather than, um, uh, Kingpin. So, um, that's the reason why, uh, the tracksuit mafia, who is under her command now, it was, it was formerly her father's, uh, command, but now they're, they're under her control, and, uh, so that's why, um, Echo is um, trying to uh, locate uh, the, the Ronin suit, and more specifically, who, whoever is wearing the Ronin suit, um, because she wants revenge for, for her father's death. Um, and so be, because it was Kate Bishop who, who was found um, wearing the suit, um, that, that's why they're going after her. Now, now Hawkeye tries to convince uh, Echo that, that, um, that Ronin's dead, and... and Maya, uh, not Maya, <laughs> Kate, um, just happened to be wearing the suit at the time, not knowing what it meant, uh, but Echo doesn't believe Hawkeye, is still believing that Ronan's still alive, um, <clears throat> and, uh, what ends up happening is, uh, Hawkeye manages to escape, um, there's a fight scene, she helps, uh, Kate escape, but, uh, Hawkeye's hearing aid, uh, gets damaged uh, in the process. Um, yeah, Hawkeye's hard of hearing now, um, which is something I forgot to mention earlier. Uh, that was probably uh, an important detail I should have mentioned earlier. <laughs> Sorry about that. But yeah, um, I actually think um, that um, this episode does a really good job of, of uh, demonstrating what it's like to be a person who's hard of hearing and doesn't have a hearing aid. Because there's this one scene where Hawkeye's son uh, calls him on the phone to talk to him. And uh, because his hearing aid's broken, he, he can't hear him. So Kate writes on a notepad um, what the son is saying to him a, a, as they're talking. And um, yeah, it, it definitely does a good job of... of putting you in the shoes of a person who is hard of hearing or who, who might be even deaf, um, you know, for, for, for someone who, who doesn't know what it's like. And um, I actually really appreciate that. Um, not only that, but, but, but I do also uh, really enjoy the, the, the car chase sequence that came before this scene, um, especially... Um, <laughs> uh, there's, so towards the end of, of the of the of the chase sequence, um, Kate shoots an arrow into the air, and Hawkeye shoots his own arrow, which has pin particles as the arrow tip, and, and he shoots her arrow with his arrow, which grows into a giant one that comes crashing down on them, and <laughs> it's such <laughs> like I was not expecting that at all. That 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 was actually a, an an amazing moment uh, during that chase sequence. Um, and of course, um, so, um, so after, um, 
you know, they, they go through everything um, uh, with, you know, getting chased by the tracksuit mafia and escaping from them. Um, the tracksuit mafia, you know, has to uh, clear out from their current base of operations and move to a new one, uh, during which um, Echo's second in command um, tries to tell Echo that they're better off uh, not pursuing Ronan because Uncle, whoever he is, um, isn't going to be happy um, with them uh, chasing after Ronan. Now, we obviously don't know who Uncle is um, yet, but um, like I said before, because of Echo's connection to Kingpin in the comics, I'm pretty sure it's, it's going to be Kingpin. <laughs> and uh, especially for, for the reason that, um, you know, Kingpin was in um, the Netflix Daredevil show, um, and um, apparently, you know, Apparently this is confirmed, but but I'm still going to take it as just a rumor. But apparently Daredevil is going to be in Spider-Man No Way Home, and um, the fifth episode of Hawkeye uh, debuts this Wednesday, and uh, Spider-Man No Way Home comes out this Friday. So I don't think that's a coincidence. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm pretty sure uh, what they're going to do is introduce Kingpin first in, in Hawkeye and then we may or may not see him in No Way Home following that. You know, like it, it just lines up too perfectly, you know, that that like like why wouldn't they have Kingpin make his Hawkeye debut this, when it comes out the same week as Spider Man No Way Home. You know what I mean? Like they they had to have planned this out, right? Right? You know if it's not this week, I'm 99% sure that that Kingpin will, will show up in, in the final episode of Hawkeye. Um, and, um, so, uh, yeah, um, the, the last bit of what happens in episode three is, um, they go back to, um, Kate Bishop's, uh, penthouse, her, you know, where her mother lives, and, uh, she tries to look up um, information on Jack because uh, she suspects that... Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot to mention earlier. Um... <clears throat> Excuse me. So Armand, um, who I mentioned before as one of the guys at the black market auction who is trying to buy the Ronin suit and the Ronin sword, um, he was actually killed um, um, after the, the auction happened. And... Uh, Kate has been suspicious of Jack as, as being the one who, who murdered him uh, all this time. And uh, one of the things that, that she did um, to prove that he knows how to use a sword is uh, actually challenge him to a fencing duel. And um, she knew that, that um, he, he was pretending to not be as good of a sword with a sword um, as he is. And uh, she proved this by trying to... Uh, stab him in the face while he was off guard and he managed to parry it and knock the sword out of her hand um so so that definitely proves that um he's hiding something and uh like i said you know she's basically sus suspicious of him uh being the murderer uh, all this time um but um you know other than you know the fact that um she was able to prove that that, that jack was lying about not being able to handle a sword well, she can't really prove beyond that 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 you know he's responsible uh, for her for um, Armand's death. So uh, you know they try to look up information on Jack um, while they, while they're uh, at uh, her mother's uh, penthouse, and um, as Hawkeye starts to look around at, after Kate gets locked out of the criminal database. Um, uh, Jack actually um, holds the Ronin sword um, to Hawkeye's throat. Um, to uh... <laughs> at first, I thought because um, this is how the the third episode ends. So I thought the fourth episode was going to start with the reveal that that Jack is swordsman, and that there was going to be you know a fight between Hawkeye and Jack. Um, but no, it, it, instead, as it turns out. Um, uh, Kate's mother is there as well, and uh, Jack just <laughs> supposedly Jack mistook uh, Hawkeye for a robber or, or or something, but then you know backs off when he realizes that 
you know, Hawkeye is a, an, an Avenger and, and so on. So they have a little talk. Um, uh, Kate's mother asks Hawkeye not to, um, to, to not get Kate involved with whatever his mission is um, because she doesn't want anything to happen to Kate. And um, obviously Hawkeye can't do that because one of the reasons why um, he's on this mission to begin with is to, to clear Kate's name of, you know, being Ronan and such. And so, um, you know, <laughs> you know, so, um, uh, they, so Hawkeye does a little bit of investigation, finds out that, um, Jack, uh, is the CEO of the, Sl the Sloan company, which is, uh, which launders money for the tracksuit mafia. And, and, and so, um. He tries to find um, uh, the Kazi, who is uh, Echo's uh, right hand man, and uh, uh, basically um, tries to. Uh, he he recognizes him as, as uh, Echo's one uh, right hand man. So you know he tells her, you know, try to convince her that that. Ronan's dead, and, and to forget about going after him, you know? And so, um, <laughs> um, now, um, in addition to, um, uh, doing this, um, Hawkeye also, uh, gives Kate the task of retrieving, uh, Hawkeye's trick arrows, um, um, from the, the L.A., the... <laughs> The, the same group of LARPers that, um, that Hawkeye dealt with before, um, because, uh, apparently they retrieved them from, uh, the, the former base of operations for the tracksuit mafia. So Kate meets up with them, explains what's going on. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, of course they, they get their stuff back. Um, uh, and in, in between all of this, um, Hawkeye and Kate, um, spend a night together, um, Basically bonding, really, you, you know, um, decorating a Christmas tree, uh, planning out what they're going to do. Um, Hawkeye teaches her a, a coin trick, and, and um, they talk about, um, basically, they, they talk about um, Natasha Romanoff, Black Widow, um, and, and how, um, the, the, how um, Clint and, and um, Natasha met was... Um, he was assigned to kill her, but decided not to, and, um, you know, he, he, that, that's basically, um, yeah, so, um, Kate asks her, uh, Kate asked Hawkeye, <laughs> um, what was the best shot you've ever taken, and he, he said, the one I didn't take, which is, of course, uh, referring to Natasha, and that's how he tells the story, and, um, so, um, yeah, that, that's one of the reasons why, um, that had stretched such a strong connection together and um you know why why um her death uh, in avengers endgame um had such an effect on him you know and um so um after all all of this um you know so so hawkeye gets his trick arrows back um and uh, by the way um the officer who gives um uh, Hawkeye, his trick arrows back, um, uh, oh, excuse me, um, she, <laughs> she, she has the name Bombshell, uh, on the bag that, that she hands to Hawkeye, uh, to, uh, that has Hawkeye's tricks, trick arrows in her, um, God, I can't talk, but the bag belongs to her, and it has the name Bombshell on it, which means that this character is a Bombshell from the comics, who is another character that has um, a connection to Hawkeye in the comics. Um, she, she's basically someone who, you know, in the comics ha has tried to kill Hawkeye a number of times, but has always failed. Um, I'm not exactly sure if, if she's a villain. I, I haven't spent that much time uh, looking her up a after seeing her in the show, but um, yeah... Uh, Another character that 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 um they're introducing and slowly um bringing into the MCU, um which, you know, I'm certainly looking forward to. Um, and uh, 
I don't think she's going to have a role uh, in the Hawkeye show uh, beyond her small introduction here, but they're definitely setting her up to, to, to be um, a, a play a bigger part um, in the MCU going forward. Um, so um, the episode ends with um, Kate and Hawkeye on a roof uh, trying to... Um, uh, formulating a plan to sneak into to Echo's apartment to uh, take... Uh, the, the watch um, that, that I mentioned before, um, you know, to get it back. Now, the way Hawkeye planned it out was that he, he was the, the one who was going to go in and Kate would be lookout, but, but Kate decided to, to go in instead because she figured she would be distracted, um, you know, if she was the one playing lookout. And um, she, she, does, she basically does things her own way. Um, and uh, what ends up happening is a sign alarm ends up going off and alerting Echo to uh, the fact that um, uh, that that Kate's in the apartment, and she manages to retrieve the watch uh, and also finds that um, Echo has been keeping tabs on Hawkeye's family, um, and um, so so Kate and Echo fight in her apartment. At the same time, Hawkeye is being attacked by someone else on the roof who Hawkeye at first thinks is Echo. And um, the two of them meet up on, on, on the roof where the, where the fight continues. And of course, um, the, the unknown assailant uh, person who is attacking Hawkeye is revealed to be Yelena from the Black Widow movie. Um, now, um, of course, this is following up on the post credit scene in Black Widow where um, Yelena visits uh, Natasha's grave and Valentina from Falcon and the Winter Soldier uh, tells her that, um, you know, Hawkeye is the one who, who, who killed um, Natasha. Now, why um, Yelena believes this when, when she should know that, that Natasha and, and Clint were close, I don't know. Um, so, you know, and, and the fact that um, she basically shows up unexpectedly and, and doesn't even talk um, during the short period of time that we see her leaves an air, air of mystery to, um, you know, whether or not she actually believes that that Hawkeye killed Natasha or if she's uh, being tested or whatnot. <laughs> you know, but but basically the, the fact that... Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, Hawkeye doesn't know Yelena because um, when when he tells Kate, you know, that they're not partners and, th and that, that, that he, he doesn't want to, to work with her anymore, um, he, he, he refers to Yelena as a Black Widow assassin rather than by name. Uh, so, um, you know, he doesn't seem to know her. He just seems to think that somebody hired a Black Widow assassin to, to go after him. Uh, but of course, he doesn't know the reason why um, Yelena is going after uh, Hawkeye, and so um, you know it would make sense for him to think that the him being attacked by a Black Widow assassin has something to do with you know the whole business with the Ronin suit and Echo and the tracksuit mafia and everything, you know. So um, there's quite a lot uh, going on with this show here, um, you know. There's a murder mystery. There's a Hawkeye trying to clear Kate's name of, of the Ronin costume and whatnot. You know, <laughs> and uh, we, we still don't know exactly what, what the watch is. Um, but the fact that it was retrieved from the Avengers compound, just like the Ronin suit and Ronin sword, again, leads me to believe that um, this is um, one of the time traveling watches that they used in Avengers Endgame. And. Another reason for that is because, um, so I mentioned before that um, Swordsman in, in the comics is Hawkeye's mentor. Well, um, he was also, um, for a short period of time, one of the Avengers. Um, during a period of time where the Avengers had lost a lot of its members, and so they were recruiting former villains to be members of the team. And so... Um, <laughs> Swordsman actually managed to be become one of the Avengers in one of the worst ways possible. Excuse me. Uh, basically, um, <laughs> trying to kidnap Captain America and force him into making them their leader, which um, ends up actually working out for them bec because um, the Mandarin actually um, teleports um, uh, Swordsman away uh, 
while they're while they're fighting and and manages to create a clone of Iron Man who who tricks the the Avengers into thinking, you know that that Swordsman was just fighting them just to test them and, and that he wasn't really an enemy and such. But uh, make no mistake, Swordsman has been an enemy more than he has a hero. Um, and uh, you know, there's this really wild and crazy story that <laughs> that the Swordsman was involved in, involving Kang the Conqueror and whatnot, and. Uh, you know, it, it involves Mantis and, and Swordsman becoming a tree person. <laughs> it's it's a it's a wild and weird comic, and uh, <laughs> yeah, n none of that is going to happen in the MCU, obviously. But the fact that Swordsman does have a connection to Kang the Conqueror in the comics because of this story uh, is one of the reasons why um, I believe that um, you know, it's no coincidence that Swordsman and uh, there's a mystery behind this watch. Like I am pretty sure this is going that the watch is is one of the the, the time traveling devices from Avengers Endgame. Although again, what exactly um, the tracksuit mafia wants it for, we we don't really know. Um, because again, um, the tracksuit mafia is actually um, again, <laughs> although Maya Echo is the leader of, of the tracksuit mafia, um, Uncle is the the. The upper higher boss um you know who is above her you know so and and again i'm pretty sure they're going to reveal at the end of episode five this week that that um that that the boss is kingpin and and so um we'll probably learn you know what the watch is um uh if not in this episode uh in the next one and uh you know, like I said, I, I'm pre I am pretty sure it's going to be one of the time traveling devices from Avengers Endgame. You know, especially since the multiverse is back now, and, and we we've been introduced to Kang the Conqueror through Loki. Um, so, uh, yeah, so so that's what I think is going on there. Now, um, Nando V Movies um, actually made a video uh, just a few days ago, or was it yesterday? doesn't matter he he put out a video giving his theories for what he thinks is going on with the murder mystery um that's in hawkeye you know like like who killed armand and um you know like i said before kate suspects jack and is trying to provide proof that that, that he's the one who did it although um nando actually suspects that it was actually the mother who is responsible for it and um out of all the theories that he presents I actually think that um, this one is the most plausible um, because um, now I'm not saying it's going to happen or anything, but um, it does actually make sort of sense um, when you think about it. And it would make for one hell of a plot twist if it actually ends up turning out to be true. So, um, yeah. Um, and one of the reasons uh, he gives for, for believing that um, the that's actually Kate's mother that is responsible for killing Armand is because um, of a connection to a character named Madame Mask, who is a villain in the comics. And, um, <laughs> but, but this is again, another one of those things where it gets complicated with the continuity of the MCU because Madame Mask is actually a villain who was in um, one of the pre Disney plus uh, MCU shows. Uh, she was a villain in uh, agent Carter, which, apparently is canon to the mcu even though all the other three disney plus shows aren't canon to the mcu um you know and uh so if so it's because of that that um it's suspected that um madam mask that uh, eleanor is not madam mask on the show uh because we've already had madam mask on agent carter and um so if it does turn out that, that Eleanor is Madame Mask, then, um, you know, it, it, they would probably just explain it as Madame Mask is just a name, you know, that that can be, that anybody can be Madame Mask, like how, um, you know, there's been multiple Captain Americas in the MCU, or how, you know, Ronan is, is just a name and not just one person. So, uh, you know, that that's probably the explanation they're going to give if, if Eleanor turns out to be Madame Mask and Agent Carter is canon to the MCU. And also, you know, there's the fact that um they said that um 
pre-Disney Plus MCU shows are not canon to the MCU, but <laughs> Jarvis from Agent Carter actually appeared in an MCU movie, Avengers Endgame. So it's a whole mess. It's complicated and it's messy. And <laughs> yeah, um, but like I said, um, his theory is actually very plausible. So I wouldn't be surprised uh, if it actually ends up turning out to be true. But at the same time, I also won't be surprised if it turns out to not be true. Um, because um, that, that, <laughs> that there's been no foreshadowing or buildup really um, to um, hinting at um, Eleanor uh, actually being the one who killed Armand. Um, one of the reasons he gives is because uh, usually in a murder mystery, um, uh, when somebody who ends up being murdered is arguing with somebody like the night before they murdered or something, usually in a murder mystery, the person that they argued with is a suspect, but um, this that isn't the case in this show. Um, so the, the fact that obviously Kate wouldn't suspect her own mother um, might be a red herring to distract us from the fact that it was in fact her who did it, but um, I don't know. Um, Certainly, it's an interesting theory, uh, something to think about, and um, like like I said, whether it happens or not, um, I wouldn't be surprised, but I do think that um, if it turns out to be true, it, it, it'll be one hell of a plot twist. And uh, one last thing I, I, I do want to mention here is that um, they are very strongly hinting at Hawkeye getting a comet-accurate costume in this show. Um, first, um, Kate draws a, a, a concept art, so to speak, of a, a Hawkeye costume for Clint uh, in episode three. And then when she meets up with the with the LARPers um, to, to get the trick arrows back, um, <laughs> she basically makes a deal with them to uh, get the trick arrows back. Um, you know, we get you material for costumes and, and you get us our arrows. And um, uh, basically, um, they, they, they tell, she, te she tells them to... to that they'll get materials to make a costume for for Hawkeye as well. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure uh, Hawkeye is actually going to get a comic-accurate costume in the final episode, which I'm very excited for. I absolutely can't wait to see that. I, I'm i sure it's going to turn out great, uh, because uh, that's actually been a recurring thing that's, that's been happening in the Disney Plus shows um, so far. At the last episode of WandaVision, Wanda got a comic accurate, yeah, comic accurate Scarlet Witch costume. Uh, in the last episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier, Sam got a comic accurate Captain America costume. So I would not be surprised at all, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing Hawkeye in a comic accurate costume in the last episode of Hawkeye. <laughs> So yeah, uh, those, those are my thoughts on the show so far. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. Uh, I'll do some more research uh, on the Bombshell character um, and maybe talk about her a little bit more um, if, I, if I think she's going to be, end up being important uh, in the MCU going forward. Uh, and, and of course, uh, I'll do a video uh, speculating on what I think um, the Echo Show is going to be about, um, assuming it's not just a retelling of her origin or, or something like a prequel to the Hawkeye show, you know, after the show ends. Um, and then, you know, and of course, you know, there's, there's probably most definitely going to be a connection to Spider-Man No Way Home, uh, given how, uh, again, episode five, uh, comes out the same week as Spider-Man No Way Home. And of course the the Hawkeye season finale comes out the week after Spider-Man No Way Home is released. So, very, very certain that um, the show and the movie are, are connected somehow. And uh, we'll see how things play out. But um, again, we, I, I, I seriously think that um, The Watch is a time-traveling device from Avengers Endgame, which is going to be very important and will have a connection to, to Spider-Man No Way Home. So... Uh, yeah, I, I'm actually very looking forward to uh, seeing how the show ends. Um, with the other shows, um, that there came a certain point where um, how one of the episodes ended, it, it got me really excited um, for wanting to see the next episode. You know what I mean? Like, like with uh, WandaVision, 
I, I forget which episode it was, but the one that ends with her expanding the universe that that she created um, after um, Vision almost died. Um, after the ending of that episode, it got me really excited to see what happen next like oh my god i need to see the next episode right now <laughs> you know and, and the same thing for um episode the ending of episode four and falcon and the winter soldier you know and then loki with, with loki it was like that you know after the very second episode you know what i mean so um with hawkeye nothing like that has happened yet like even um with the mystery of who like I like I said, I didn't know who Echo was uh, at the end of episode two, so I was wondering, you know, like, who is this character and and what's her deal? What is she doing on this show? You know, like like I was intrigued, but I wasn't excited. Like I need to see the next episode right now. Like that hasn't happened for me yet with Hawkeye, uh, but hopefully, um, with this episode coming up uh, this week, um, that'll happen. But um. Either way, I'm looking forward to uh, the final episode regardless because I do want to see um, both uh, Hawkeye in a comic accurate costume and um, how um, th this show uh, supposedly connects to Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, but yeah, th th those are my thoughts on the Hawkeye show so far and what I think is going to happen. Um, like I said, I don't think it's uh, anything spectacular or amazing or, you know anything like that but i do think it's better than what i was expecting it to be so that's good um so yeah <laughs> i apologize for for uh, this discussion being so long as it is but um you know when, when you miss as many episodes as i do um that, that's typically what ends up happening so uh yeah if you made it this far thank you all for watching and uh hopefully um i'll get back to streaming uh, very soon uh, although uh, it might be uh, after uh, Spider-Man No Way Home comes out. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'll definitely have to do a, a live discussion of that rather than in video form. Uh, because, yeah, <laughs> there's definitely going to be a lot to say about that movie. Uh, so look forward to that. Um, comes out this weekend or this week uh, if you live outside the United States. Uh be sure to steer clear of spoilers for Spider-Man No Way Home and such. And uh, thank you all for watching and hope you all have a great rest of your day or whatever.